our training on the clawback provision. This is a topic that is crucial to your understanding of how investors and managers structure obligations regarding distributions within a private equity fund. This video will help you to understand the basics of clawback provisions and when it would be applied. Private equity investments are by their nature generally illiquid. Thus, private equity funds are often managed on a deal-by-deal -deal basis. In other words, upon disposition of a single investment, absent recycling, the limited partners will typically distribute their capital contributions and a preferred return, if applicable, both solely with respect to that investment and the remaining proceeds from that investment will be shared by the investors and management. In effect, the management group will share in the proceeds of an investment, receive its carry, before the investors have been returned their capital with respect to other investments by the fund. The problem arises when certain investments subsequently sour. After all the investments are disposed of and the fund liquidates, the investors may not receive their capital contributions or preferred return, if applicable, on an aggregate basis. The clawback obligates the management team to return all or a portion of the share of profits previously received from prior deals if subsequent deals are not all profitable. There are solutions to this problem. First, some funds mandate the return of the investor's aggregate capital contributions to the fund before the management team may share in any profit. Second, some funds mimic hedge funds and include fair value tests that restricts distributions of profit to the management team unless the net asset value of the fund at the time of distribution exceeds 100% or more of the unreturned capital contributions. Nevertheless, most private equity funds include a clawback provision. Typically, the clawback is triggered upon the liquidation or termination of the fund and is measured by two alternative thresholds, one from the investor's perspective and the other from the management team's perspective. The first threshold is whether or not the investors have received their capital contributions and preferred returns if applicable. The second threshold is based on whether or not management has received more than its share of carry determined on an aggregate basis, including all of the fund's investments. Regardless of the threshold, the clawback amount is almost always limited to the after-tax carry amount, i.e., the share of profit or proceeds reviewed by the management team less than the tax on such share. However, this limitation is phrased, often incorrectly, in a variety of different forms. Problems often arise because of the confusion among income allocations and cash distributions and the definition of carry. The clawback provision can be defined as the general partner's promise that over the life of the fund, the managers will not receive a greater share of the fund's distributions than they bargain for. This means that the general partners will have agreed to keep only a certain percentage of the fund's profits, say 20%. Any distributions in excess of 20% would have to be returned to the fund's limited partners. Most limited partnership agreements for private equity funds have two separate clawback components, the limited partner clawback and the general partner clawback. General partner clawback provisions can require the general partner to return distributions if any of the following conditions hold true. If a limited partner has not received his preferred return, the general partner has received carried interest in excess of the contractual rate, or a limited partner has not received its catch-up period share of profits. A limited partner clawback operates in a similar manner but will clawback funds from the limited partners instead of the general partners. For years, private equity funds have been structured to provide performance-based compensation to fund managers. In the early years of the U.S. private equity industry, most fund managers received distributions of carried interest only after the fund's investors had received distributions from the fund equal to their capital committed to the fund. Under this arrangement, it was very unlikely that fund managers would receive carried interest distributions in excess of what they were entitled to. As the private equity industry has evolved, many fund managers negotiated for earlier distributions of carried interest. During the fundraising frenzy of the late 1990s and early 2000s, fund managers negotiated front-loaded distribution provisions and, as a result of early portfolio gains followed by significant losses, many of these managers received carried interest distributions in excess of their share of the fund's cumulative profits, generating clawback obligations. Traditional clawback provisions are not triggered until the fund dissolves or liquidates. Beyond the obvious time value concerns, 
Investors are not interested in chasing down individual fund managers, some of whom may have left the fund group or otherwise spent the money. And it is common for clawback obligations to be net of the manager's tax liability attributable to the carry. How to address the clawback issue? Common approaches include the following. Pay it back now. Estimate the potential clawback liability and contribute the amount back to the fund's limited partners. This is the simplest and most straightforward way of dealing with the problem. This approach requires a potentially large cash contribution by a group of individual managers who may not all have the financial ability or desire to make the required contribution. Create Reserve Accounts Some fund managers set up reserve accounts often funded by management fees. This can be a desirable approach if the fund's portfolio has a legitimate chance to realize sufficient gains that would ultimately eliminate the clawback problem. This approach is sometimes undesirable because it could pit existing members of the fund group who are entitled to the current income of the management fee against former members of the fund group who are not entitled to management fees income but are on the hook for a portion of the clawback. Management Fee Waiver The most common clawback management tool is a waiver by managers of future management fees in exchange for the waiver by investors of future clawback payments. This method raises complicated tax and accounting issues that involve amendments to the fund's partnership agreement and negotiations with limited partners. Clawback management is a hot issue in today's fundraising environment. Limited partners are looking closely at how fund managers have handled past clawback obligations and are focusing much more attention on fund's distribution mechanics and clawback provisions. Thank you once again for your time and attention, and this is businesstraining.com where you can earn a master's level qualification to make more money.